What's up, Pro Guides family? I'm Renox, and today we'll be going over one bad habit for every rank. So no matter what rank you're currently in, we'll have something that you can use to improve. Before we do that though, it's of course time for our question of the day. Today's question is, are you excited for the new operation? There's been a lot of talk recently about getting a new operation released very soon, and we're just wondering if you're excited for it. Personally, I'm just wondering what they'll bring out. Last operation was a bit of a, bit of a mess with the new player models, especially at first. So this time around, I'm just hoping they bring some new content without breaking the entire game. What are your guys' thoughts though? Make sure to let us know in the comments down below. And with that, let's get straight into the video. All right, guys, the first rank we're going to be going over, of course, is silver. In the silver ranks, players, of course, have a whole lot of bad habits. Oftentimes, their counter strafing isn't on point. They may have really bad aim, or maybe they have difficulties controlling their spread. But the most important thing that all silver players struggle with, because if they don't, they essentially automatically be able to carry themselves out of silver, is crosshair placement. On this channel, we stress crosshair placement a lot, and that's for a good reason. Crosshair placement is truly the most important skill to work on because it will massively boost your performance. Once you feel like you've started getting it down a bit and once you've already started ranking up towards Gold Nova or maybe even Master Guardian, you'll continue to work on it more and more. Crosshair placement in theory is easy because after all, all you have to do is place your crosshair at head level, right? But to get it down for every single angle in every single map and to get a feeling for when someone will instead crouch peek you or even hold an angle while crouched really isn't as easy as it seems. Well, enough about why we stress it so much. What's the issue that a lot of silver players have? Well, most, if not all, silver players have really untrained crosshair placement. Watching them play, you can most of the time see them aiming at the floor in front of them rather than anywhere near where the enemy might be. And obviously, that doesn't lead to a whole lot of success. If you're a silver player, the truth is you obviously have a whole lot of stuff you need to improve on. But the most important and effective thing that you can work on right now is definitely your crosshair placement. To practice it, I'd recommend just hopping into a deathmatch server and truly focusing on where you have your crosshair at all times. In there, your main focus shouldn't be on where the next enemy might be, but rather about essentially tracking the edge of the walls as you're going around the corner and you'll have your opponents as a helping hand to know if you're aiming too high or too low. When it comes to Gold Nova, a lot of people struggle with a bad habit completely different though. Gold Nova players a lot of the time really like to overestimate their abilities. In these ranks, you'll hear a lot of complaints about how their team is so enormously bad. Things like Gold Nova being harder than or just as hard as Global Elite, and anyone being better than them just being called a cheater. This is caused by something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. To summarize, it's basically an effect that makes people, once they begin grasping the basic skills, gain extreme confidence and makes them feel like they understand all there is to know about that certain skill. The reality is though that there are still tons of things to understand and learn, which they will only realize once they start improving more. And it's then that they start to lose some of that confidence until they start getting really, really good at it. From personal experience, I can definitely say that I hear Global Elite and Face It Level 10 players complaining about how bad they are a whole lot more than your average Gold Nova 2 player. Which is kind of interesting, because if you were to put those two in a duel, it's obvious which player would win. When I'm reading the comments under videos like these, I actually see a lot of people that are in this rank saying about how we've never played in Silver and Gold Nova matchmaking and about how we simply don't understand how difficult it is. Well, I'm sorry to say it guys, but that's simply not true. When I play with friends who are really new to the game and I'm forced onto a smurf account because otherwise I'm unable to queue due to the skill disparity, my biggest issue is actually that I rank up every other game until I can't really queue with my friends again. The truth is, if you're a Gold Nova player, you most likely deserve to be there. The only way you're gonna climb from there and reach the higher ranks is if you stay humble, start practicing more, and try to learn from the pros. It's only once you begin to understand that there is a whole lot more to Counter-Strike than you initially might have thought that you can start to really climb the ranks again and become a really great player. So what about the Master Guardian ranks? What do people struggle with in here? Well, from what I've noticed from mostly Master Guardian players is that they do start to understand that they have and can use their utility, but they're making some crucial mistakes with it. When it comes to Master Guardian utility usage, there's mostly two types. You either have the type that feels like all they need to throw is this and that smoke combined with a certain flash and maybe a Molotov and you automatically win. Personally, when I was in Master Guardian, I was this kind of player. I had a big focus on my utility usage and I was always trying to get my teammates to do some sort of execute. I even made a team with some of my friends back then to practice those executes so that we could win every game, which, well, we, we didn't do. The truth is, in order to win, you don't just need to throw the right smokes, flashes, and molotovs, but actually the more basic things like trading, rotation, and individual plays matter a lot more, at least in matchmaking. 
When it comes to the second type, we have people that will just spam their utility for the hell of it. These are the types of players that will just throw a smoke or molly for whatever reason, a reason that isn't even clear to them. Utility is truly a very valuable resource if used at the right times and right position. Don't just throw a CT or ramp smoke because you feel like it, but throw it because you're trying to achieve something. The best way to learn this is honestly playing utility heavy positions. Think B Apartments on Mirage. If you're using your utility right, especially paired with good positioning, you'll essentially have to do no aiming at all, and you won't lose your bomb sight even once. Back in my days, when I was especially working on my decision making, I used to really love playing these types of bomb sites because whenever I would lose a bomb sight, it was almost never that I played it right and just missed my shots. But rather, if I lost a bomb sight, it's probably fair to say that I misplayed at least to an extent. If you feel like you are unable to hold these kinds of bomb sites and don't know what you're doing wrong, I'd advise watching demos from players like Taco and Zipnix. They are both really solid anchors and you can learn a lot from them. When it comes to the Eagle ranks, there's again mistakes that a majority of players make there, and that is understanding when it is and isn't a good time to go aggressive. In those ranks, you have a lot of players who focus on getting good stats, and that leads to a whole lot of passive play, which a lot of the time isn't the best call. When it comes to aggression, to be really short about it, you do want to go aggressive when you're in a disadvantageous position, and you want to be passive when you're already at the advantage. To give an example, if you're on the CT side of Nuke and it's five versus five, and you and your team still have a full buy, you should realistically win about 60 to 70% of your rounds. So going aggressive really just isn't justified if you want to keep those odds. Unless of course you've been getting shut down, meaning your percentage is more at like 30 or 40%. If instead though, you are on T side and it's 5v5, you do probably want to go aggressive and try to make a play because if you do nothing and keep the current odds, you'll likely lose. Of course, when you do go aggressive, it's best to make a high percent play. For example, if you take a 50-50 duel against someone outside of Squeaky Door, then your odds are going up from 40-60 or maybe even 30-70 to 50-50. So it's a good fight that you should be taking. If instead you're taking an angle like outside garage against an opper, even though you might have a rifle, your chances are probably about 25 against 75. So taking a fight like this is not a good idea as it lowers your odds to win the round. If you're already down a man and your chances are around 25%, taking a fight again is very favorable. But if you've already managed to win a gunfight and your odds are around 60-40, you really don't want to be taking a fight unless it's a really, really favorable one. Even though a lot of Eagle ranked players are starting to understand most basics and mechanics of the game, a lot of them fail to really incorporate smart play like this and understand when to go aggressive. So if you're in that rank, you might want to start giving it a thought. Before we head on over to our Supreme ranks, we'd quickly like to give a shout out to our new Call of Duty channel. If you enjoy our videos and are interested in Call of Duty content as well, make sure to check them out. I'm sure you'll be able to learn a lot from our tips. When it comes to Supreme players, the most common mistake that a lot of them are making is playing too predictably. If you've reached this rank, you are probably already really good at one certain style, namely your own play style. But the odds are is that you still struggle with some other styles and are therefore really likely to keep playing the style that you prefer. Maybe by now, you've started to really take a liking to certain angles and positions and keep doing certain plays and pushes. Sure, you might be really good at them and that's something that you can be proud of. But what do you do as soon as your opponents start countering it or are beginning to understand your patterns? Nothing, an ex-pro player for Cloud9 and Complexity actually talked about this in one of his rants. He mentioned how a lot of pug players think that they have what it takes to go pro, for example, because they outfrag them or beat them in a pug scenario. He said how a lot of these players feel like since they've managed to beat a pro, they also have what it takes to be one themselves. But the truth is, is that that's not actually the case. Nothing told his viewers that a lot of these types of pug players only really have three or four go-to plays that they've really perfected and can execute well. But the thing about it is, is that if you were to go up against a pro player like this multiple times, their plays would stop working after the second or third game because you'd simply know what they'll do and it'll no longer work. That's actually the thing that most Supreme players struggle with as well. They're really good at a few parts of the game, but have their angles and positions, but they aren't very adaptable and are quite predictable in their own plays, especially if you were to play with them multiple times. The last rank is, of course, Global Elite. And when it comes to them, it's really hard to say. Of course, most of them, or in fact all of them, are not perfect players, but you can always become better and better, but most of them have different kinds of mistakes and different gaps in their game. The biggest mistake a global elite therefore can make is just stopping trying to improve. Unless they're just in it for the fun, of course, and no longer care about getting better. Well guys, that's going to be all for now. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and especially ring that notification bell to never miss out on another Pro Guides video. 
While you're at it, also head on over to ProGuides.com where you will be able to find a wide array of coaches that will help you fix all of your mistakes and reach the rank of your dreams. On top of that, you can also get access to the one and only Simple Master Course to Counter-Strike to get tips from the absolute GOAT of Counter-Strike himself. With that being said, we wish you all a great rest of your day and the best of luck of improving. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you all in the next one.